Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This week, oh, this month is Dysautonomia Awareness Month. Um, I have a form of dysautonomia brought on by a genetic condition that I've got called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and I have a video all about that on my channel so I'll link that down below if you want to learn more about my genetic condition. But today I'm going to be focusing on um, the form of dysautonomia that I have and that is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Um, like I said, this coincides with a genetic condition I just mentioned. Um, it's quite common for people to get a form of dysautonomia with Ehlers-Danlos. So basically I'm going to be telling you about what POTS is and how it affects me. Um, I'm going to be referring to it as POTS, but the full name is Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. Um, basically it's where your nervous system, your autonomic nervous system doesn't function properly. Um, and I actually have a kind of practical test part of this video that I will be inserting that me and Tom filmed yesterday. Um, I wanted to do me versus Tom. So basically I wanted to show you what a normal person's reaction is to standing up. And I wanted to show you what a person with POTS reaction is to standing up. So that's what I filmed for you last night. But before I show you that, I do want to go into a little bit of detail and show you what it is. Um, talk about what it is before I show you. Because um, obviously guys, a lot of people seeing is how you learn. So I could sit here and babble on and all this information will go in, in, in one ear, ear and out the other. So I wanted to make it that you guys can actually see what happens. Um, so basically, with someone with POTS, their nervous system doesn't function properly. They can't regulate their blood pressure or their heart rate. So for example, if I've been sat down for a while and I wanted to stand up, Normal person, no big deal. They can stand up, get up, go to the toilet, get a drink, whatever they need to do. Um, they can get up and down, up and down, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, no problems. But with someone with POTS, when we stand up, our blood pressure, not everybody's blood pressure drops, but in my case, my blood pressure does. My body doesn't know how to keep my blood pressure up. Um, so my heart rate will speed up to try and keep the blood circulating up to my brain and my blood pressure will just keep dropping and dropping and dropping and at that point all the blood in your body has because you've stood up it's basically rushed down to the bottom of your body and it stays there your body doesn't know how to get it up again so as fast your heart's pumping away like this trying to get that blood back up to your brain and it just can't your heart rate will just keep going and going and going come on like come on let's get this blood back up to the brain and it just can't it doesn't know how and that kind of case, if your heart rate goes up too high and your blood pressure drops too low, you will end up passing out because your body needs to be like, right, let's shut down, drop to the floor, and all your blood will spread out and circulate properly and then you will regain consciousness. And that is the body's way, like defense mechanism, to stop your body from damaging itself, essentially. So... In the test that me and Tom did last night, I actually ended up passing out because that happened to me. Um, and that was because I stood up way too quickly. Someone with POTS has to take their time when they get up from sitting. Um, so if they've been laying down, usually they'll have to sit up for a while before they can stand up. In fact, some of you guys may have experienced this if you don't have POTS. Sometimes you might have been sitting down for a while and you might stand up too quickly and feel a bit dizzy. That's basically what's happening to you there is POTS. When everybody... If you've got 10 normal people and 10 people with POTS to do the same thing, even the normal people would experience some POTS-like symptoms. So if they stood up, their blood pressure would drop a little bit and the heart rate would exceed a little bit. But within a few minutes or 30 seconds of standing, their body can correct that and everything will return to normal. But that doesn't happen with someone with POTS. I really hope I'm making sense. So basically our body doesn't know how to correct itself once it's like when someone stands up their body can adjust to that change where someone with POTS that doesn't happen so as far as like controlling POTS goes and um, like the treatments for it are usually medications some countries use saline infusions which I'm currently in the process of getting because people with POTS have a low blood volume which means they don't have as much blood basically in their body as other people um, so getting uh, saline infusions boosts your blood volume and stops dizziness, it can stop fainting. Even a lot of people are only on saline infusions as a treatment. They don't need any medication. Um, for me, I take four medications for my POTS. I take 
couple of blood pressure medications and a couple of heart rate medications but that is it that's pretty much it for treatment so i'm gonna stop babbling and i'm just gonna show you the videos um and hopefully that will explain a lot more and hopefully everything i've just said you guys will be able to see while you're watching and it will make a bit more sense um but this is what pots is guys this is how you can test for it at home please enjoy the video um yeah and i'll even i'll keep the video running and i'll show you what tom did once i passed out how he brought me back round um usually that involves lifting up the legs so if anyone does pass out guys whether they have pots or they're just a regular person people pass out from time to time best thing to do is lie them flat lift up the legs um, support the head put like a jacket or something like that underneath it just for extra comfort and um, but yeah without further ado guys enjoy the video so guys we're about to do the demonstration should i say whole portion of the video i'm gonna go first because well if i'm gonna faint i'm gonna faint let's get it over with um i've been lying currently for 10 minutes and i'm gonna take my vitals while i'm like in the laying position and then I'm going to try and balance the camera somewhere safe. And then I'm going to stand up and take them. Um, and then if I do faint, Tom doesn't have to worry about the camera. Because I told him if I do faint, I want him to carry on and show you guys what he normally does when I pass out. So you guys can see what to do in that situation. Whether it's yourself, whether it's a friend, whether it's whoever passes out. Like that's the kind of, like this is what you should do kind of thing. So currently guys, my heart rate is resting between like 70 and 90. It keeps jumping. But that's like my resting heart rate at the moment. But I am going to do take the blood pressure reading. And I'm going to go with the pulse that's on there rather than this. But I just wanted to show you guys quickly at the moment. So we'll do blood pressure. And that does take your pulse as well. So we'll get the reading off there. I'm expecting it to be fairly normal because I do have my legs up. Which is the whole reason I put my legs up. I wanted to get a, like a normal-ish blood pressure reading. I'm expecting like, yeah, 120, 130. Okay. So, I'm going to stand up now, guys. Let me pop this somewhere. Don't leap up. I need to get up anyway. Huh? I don't really feel that dizzy. I don't feel that dizzy. This went well. I don't feel that dizzy. Huh? I didn't feel that dizzy. It's dizzy enough now. Alright, I don't want to be filmed right now. Hey guys, so... I wasn't expecting to pass out. I was just saying that, that I might, but I did. Um, so... The blood pressure reading, oh, the back's coming off, um, was 88, I don't know if you can see, over 63, and pulse is 142. Now, it felt like my blood pressure dropped a lot lower, and it did, because I never pass out at 88 over, like, systolic. I usually pass out around 66, so it must have bottomed out even more that the blood pressure machine didn't catch. It, you just have to time it right, basically. And then obviously the heart rate was probably around 142, maybe higher. It just depends really. <sighs> My heart rate's still a bit high now. You can probably hear him a bit breathless. So I'm going to lie down and I'm going to let Tom start his 10 minutes lying. And then we can compare the results. So Thomas, you ready? Born ready, love. <laughs> Tom's been lying down for about 10 minutes, guys. So that's his current... Pulse a lot slower than mine. Tell me. Heart of an ox. Heart of an ox. Tell me, how do you get your pulse so well? Oh, it's all that swimming. Oh, swimming. Healthy eating. <laughs> all that pasta life. Healthy lifestyle, apparently. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do his blood pressure. Oh, I don't like blood Put pressure. Put your arm down. Button. 137 over. Pulse is 60, man. How? <laughs> 59 there. 59, what the heck? Right, are you ready to stand up? I like sleep at 40 beats, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. 
Your athlete's heart. <laughs> okay, ready? And go. You feeling okay? <laughs> okay, so 124 over 77 and pulse was 82. But now, I bet you if we do it now, we'll, yeah, we'll, now we'll take it again 60. and his pulse <laughs> will have corrected most likely. Now the difference with someone with POTS is their pulse will just keep going up and up and up and up and up, which obviously I couldn't show you that because I passed out. But if I stayed conscious, I would have taken it again, and my pulse would just keep climbing. Like, your body doesn't know how to correct Ooh. itself. It's tight this time. Your blood pressure's gone back up. <sighs> your blood pressure will probably go back up, and his pulse will be lower. And that's what you'd be expecting. Once your body has learned to correct itself. It's just frustrating that I couldn't... Yeah. Pulse is back down to 70s, and pulse is 100... Uh, the heart, blood pressure's 130 again. So, um... What did we think of our little experiment? <laughs> it was good. It was good? Well, no, it wasn't good at all. It felt <laughs> epically for you. <laughs> but for you, how did you find it? Good? It's very Do you think people are going to find this very informational? Possibly. Cool. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video portion. Before I end this video, I quickly just want to discuss the results to explain them a little bit to people who maybe don't understand or don't really know what the normal ranges of things are. So normal blood pressure is 120 over 80 to 130 over 90. Um, it's around that range um, because they found that this generation of people now have a generally higher blood pressure. Um, so it usually sits between like 25 and 130 systolic and systolic is the top number on a blood pressure and that is usually the number that people look at and that's the most important one um, so obviously I'll have all the information up on the screen as well so you guys can be looking at it so the normal range I will keep up on the screen is between 120 over 80 and 130 over 90 and normal pulse is usually like resting as in lying down is usually between 60 to 70 from probably about 60 to 80 it used to be from 60 to 100 but 100 is now considered tachycardic um so it's usually between 60 and 80 is the normal range for a resting heart rate so bearing those values in mind i'm now going to go over the results so my lying results when we first did them were 130 over 83 and my pulse was 89 which is pretty normal within normal limits so you have to remember i'm on medication as well so that was fine, that was normal. And then Tom's resting blood pressure was 137 over 79 and his pulse was 60, which is very, very good pulse, very good, good blood pressure. His blood pressure is maybe a little bit on the higher end, but I know he does get anxious when he has his blood pressure taken, so I allow a little bit of leeway for his blood pressure. Um, so I'm not bothered about that. Now, when I stood up, my blood pressure went from 130 to 88 over 63 which is a very, quite a low blood pressure, and my pulse shot up to 142. Now, to show you the difference, I've actually worked it out by how much they changed. So my pulse increased by 53 beats, and if I was to stay conscious, it would have just keep escalating, basically. And my blood pressure dropped by 42 systolic, which is the top number, and 20 diastolic. Um, so obviously the top number is the one that people like that's the one that matters so it dropped by 42 systolic which is quite a significant amount um, so you can see the difference now I'm gonna put up my values on one side and now I'm gonna show you Tom's values so his blood pressure went from 137 to 124 um, which means it dropped by 13 systolic. Now, if you compare that to mine, 13 to 42, that's a big difference for someone who has a normal blood pressure to someone who has POTS. And his pulse increased by 22 beats, which is not uncommon. Um, even though when you're looking at the range for someone with POTS, it's usually 30 to 40 beats it has to increase by. Now, although Tom's did increase by a fair bit, we then took his blood pressure again straight after and his pulse went from 82 to 73 and that was in 
20 seconds and if I had taken his blood pressure again after that it would have been completely normal like as the starting it was almost returned to normal after 30 seconds whereas someone with POTS it wouldn't return to normal it would just keep climbing the pulse would keep climbing and the blood pressure would keep dropping I hope that makes sense guys um yeah guys that is it for this video I really really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was again informative for you um you guys seem to like these kind of videos so let me know if you'd like to like me to do more about different conditions we can do more experiments just let me know down below but if you did enjoy it please give it a big thumb thumbs up please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and please share this guys because it's dysautonomy awareness month so we need to share these videos we need to try and get as much awareness out there as possible so please if you could take the time to share this video it would mean so so much to me but that is it guys i will see everybody in my next next video <laughs> Bye, guys.